Hello and welcome to our lesson on the TI-84 Plus CE student course. In this video we are focusing on graphing and in particular piecewise and or restricted domain graphing. And some of the things we are going to look at are how to enter, what, enter a piecewise function into the graphing mode and if you have bigger piecewise function, for example the Australian income tax rates, how we can do it in normal character of the screen and then store it as a function. So to enter a piecewise function in the graphing screen, we go into y equals, and then we're going to go into math. And the reason it's easy to miss the piecewise opportunity is it's down the very bottom. So I've scrolled up to get to the bottom quicker, and it's b, which is piecewise. In this case, we're just going to look at two pieces. And notice what it's going to do. It's going to actually set me up a nice little template so that I can allow me to type in my piecewise functions. And in this case, I'm going to do a quadratic where x is less than or equal to zero. So we're going to go x. Now to get the less than or equal to, that's in test. And here it is, number six. Arrow across or down and negative x cubed. I'm going to choose a cubic. And again, in this case, I want x. And we could just do x greater than or greater than or equal to because it's the same point uh, for both of that, that, that where they um, cross. So it doesn't really matter. Um, and I go back into test again greater than or equal to zero. And then when I press graph and I've got the window set up as I want, we can see that it gives us this piecewise function. Now you may think, well, hang on a minute, that doesn't look like a piecewise function. Uh, it actually looks like a negative cubic. Well, if you actually think about what I've chosen here, that actually may be the reason. But if I actually change that, I don't know, to say three X, and let's get rid of the squared, and then press graph, we can see that actually changes it quite dramatically. So yeah, there is a piecewise function in this one here. So let's say we wanted to look at a bigger piecewise function. Let's say, for example, I'm just going to turn this one off so we don't see it, leave it there. Let's say uh, the Australian tax Asian uh, rates and the different bands that there are for that. Now we can see in the y equals screen that if we've got two parts to a piecewise, it fits in really nicely. But if we were actually wanting to do something bigger, let's say the Australian uh, tax rate brackets, uh, then there's five different levels for that. And if we go into there, we can see it doesn't fit very nicely. We can't see them all. We can scroll down and we'd get to them all, but it doesn't fit very nicely in the little window we have for Y2. So we're going to do that slightly different. And for us to do that, we're going to do it in normal calculator screen. Now, just um, the only extra thing that we need to do is add speech marks, because we need to wrap up the piecewise function in speech marks so that we can store it as y2. Again, we know it's alpha uh, b to find the, um, the piecewise function that we want, and it's five parts, as I said. So that's where we're going to store it, is going to be in this section here. And then we're going to put speech marks to close it, and then we're going to store it as y2, which is in alpha f4 and we can then store it in here. And that's actually how we're going to store the piecewise function. So we're going to use the resident tax rates in Australia from 2021 to 2022. And we can see that these will be our bounds that we'll use, and these will be the tax that we're paying. Uh, this will be just a y equals zero line here, but then it'll be 0.19, because it's going to be in dollars or percent for uh, the first section in here. And then there's going to be uh, linear equations developed for each of the following. And perhaps you could pause the video at this point and come up with all those linear equations yourself for each of these tax brackets uh, for each of the bounds that is controlled by. So perhaps pause the video if you want to, or keep on watching. So these should be the linear equations that you should come up with, or a form of these. Hopefully you haven't missed this last bit here or not incorporated it. So obviously it's the amount of tax above these amounts that you need to include. So we have to take those off of each if we're going to set your equation on ice. But you maybe got a different form of this equation. Um, so have a look at it and see if they're, they're actually the same. And then now we're going to do the bounds. And remember that we're actually going to go to um, the tax rates again, look at what the taxable income rates are and choose those bounds and set them up accordingly. So again, perhaps you could pause the video and set up what your bounds will look like. So hopefully you've created something like this for each of the tax brackets. Notice that we've got X all the way through the middle and the inequalities either side of that for the different rates. 
from paying no tax up to 18,200 to being in the top tax bracket over 180,000, close the speech marks and we stored it as Y2. So now when I press enter, that's now going to be in our Y2 equation that we can see it here. And it also allows me to come up and copy it and actually work with it by arrowing back into it and changing it and perhaps even storing it as a different Y equals value. Now, if we go into graph, well, we're on Zoom standard here, and we're only going to see it for the first $10. And most people who are working earn more than $10 in a year. So we're going to change it up to a quarter of a million. And obviously, you could change your window to any values that you want. We're going to go up by 50000 And the tax we're going to pay is anything up to 80000 going up by 10000 rates. And what that now will do when we press graph, is we can see that it does increase. And it does looks almost like a quadratic, but here's our zero amounts at the very start in our first set of values. Remember, if we earn anything less than 18,200, let's say 16,000, we pay no tax. Um, but these are all linear parts, just broken up with the piecewise. So we can see that if someone earned 70,000, we can quickly work out how much tax they would pay. In Australia, $13,092 of tax you would pay on 70,000 uh, earnings in a year. So hopefully you found that useful. Thank you very much for watching and all the best of the lessons.